together. I hope that you have had a good week, that you have enjoyed those sunny times during our week, that where the light has shone into your homes, that you've been able to get out possibly for a little bit of a stroll. I know some of the days were quite cool, but when the sun is shining, I don't know about you, there is just this warmth about a day. But as we gather this morning, we gather remembering all that is, continues to happen here at Heritage United Church. And let me just draw your attention to those things. I hope that you, if you haven't so far embraced our new technology of using Zoom, you will think about it, that you will give me a call and I can help to walk you through it. You don't have to be on a computer. You can do this by phone, and there are quite a few folks who join us on Sundays at 11 o'clock in the morning, which would have been our normal coffee hour here at the church, or on Wednesday mornings at 11.30, another chance to gather. There's a number you have to phone, like you would on a telephone, and then a code you would put in, and there you are. I will let you in, and you'll be part of the conversation. I'm also more than happy to help if you would like to do this on your iPad, if you have one, or if you have a computer. Come and join the conversation. We would love to have you. Jam, I have had fun with this uh, since, I guess, I've lost track now. I think since September I started this up. Our Jesus and Me, uh, time for the young and the young at heart, a Sunday morning type of program with a craft and a game and a song. It's not a long program, uh, just something to engage us in this time to provide some activities for our younger folk if they're interested. So I hope you will have a look, uh, share it with your children, your grandchildren, pass it along. And, uh, it's been a fun part of our ministry here at the church. Wednesday reflections continue. I've had fun uh, investigating and reflecting on some of the other lectionary texts that are provided every week with our lectionary readings, uh, ones that I don't typically use on a Sunday morning, but have also been chosen for each week. So I hope you'll enjoy it. Will join me on a Wednesday to hear what I have, what thoughts I have, and maybe you'll have some more of your own after hearing what I've had to say. And those are always available on Wednesdays, sometime in the morning. I will have them out by email to those on our registered email list. If you have pictures that you would like to share with the congregation of your work, of your family life, or whatever is happening in your life right now, send them in and uh, we are going to be including those types of things on the first Sunday of each month in our newsletter. And we are almost into the season of Lent, so I encourage you to watch out for what is going to be coming. I have been thinking and I have got lots of new ideas, uh, things to watch out for each day of the week. So watch your newsletters. Those things will be starting to be listed next week. 
And those are our announcements for this morning. I hope to be engaged with each and every one of you soon. Join me for Zoom, as I said. I would love to hear your voice or see your face and be part of the conversation. But at this time, let us join together as we come into this time as we worship God. The scriptures remind us that those who wait for God will renew their strength. And so we have gathered today to wait for God, to bring the living of our lives to be blessed, to find meaning and purpose for our living every day and to renew our strength, that we might serve God well and fully in all the places life calls us to be. Worship offers us the invitation to spend time with God, to experience the still, small voice, and be inspired by that voice, to find the way forward. So come, let us worship God together. Let us join together in our opening prayer. Let us pray. God of our ancestors and our own generation, we come today to give you praise and to be open to your call. And when your call challenges us, give us strength. When your call disturbs us, assure us. When your call frightens us, calm our spirits. We pray that we may see and hear your call to love all people. Amen. The light cascades through the windows of this church on many a day. A beautiful light that shines through the, the stained glass peaks of the windows a light that shines onto the pews, warming the space, a reminder that we gather here. We gather here in body, or we gather here in spirit. The spirit of God surrounds us in this time, the time and place of wherever we are. And so may the light of Christ come into your space where you gather this morning so that we may gather together knowing that Christ is with us in this time. Amen. And now let us join together our voices as we sing our opening hymn, Come, O Fount of Many Blessings. Let us sing. Jesus, I'm 
morning and welcome to the young and the young at heart. And yes, you know, I say it every week, this is definitely one of my favorite parts of the service because I have all my friends here. And yes, I know they're stuffed animals, but each one of them is attached to somebody here from the church. And so they remind me of the spe special people that are attached to them. Like Mrs. Bonnet and Peepers the Chip, who's hiding down here, belong to Beth. And so they remind me of Beth. She always brings these here for us for Easter. And of course, we've got Moose at the back. And Moose belongs to Myrna. And Myrna, I can see Myrna sitting here in the church every Sunday morning at the back in her pew like she always does. And she'd be smiling right now. And so I'm glad to have Myrna's Moose. I've also got Taz down here in the front who belongs to Brian. And Brian, well, Brian is one of our guitar players slash uh, soundboard slash help with music for Sunday's guy. I think like Taz, Brian must have an awful lot of energy. Then there's Chimp, who belongs to Diane. And Diane does a lot around the, here at the church as well. She helps to put up banners and to change them seasonally. She helps to set up the worship table, although she's been nice in... Well, not nice. I'd love to have her here, but she's been staying away just because of the situation where we're being asked not to leave our homes unless we need to. So I miss seeing what she's put out on the table, but I appreciate everything that she has done. And Chimp was given to Diane by her husband, Paul. And so there's so much love here attached to Chimp. Of course, I've also got uh, our Fair Crow down here, and Fair Crow is Betty's. And uh, well, Betty is very actively involved in the fair. And so it's uh, very appropriate to have our fair crow. And hopefully we'll be having the fair again one, one year soon. Then, of course, there is Summer Bear, who also belongs to Diane. And I think Diane knows I appreciate the summer much more than a winter. So I look forward to Summer Bear's winter clothes coming off and him being back in summer clothes soon. Of course, I've got uh, our Frosty who also belongs to Betty. Betty and Myrna have such a beautiful garden with all these different ornaments and, and figures outside. And so what a cheerful snowman to have as part of our time together. I've also got Danny and Sally and Suzanne, who are babies of Carol D. Carol, Carol, Carol does so much around here. She makes beautiful banners, the, the one of the three wise men uh, that you'll see at the beginning of the service. She plays the organ for us on Sundays. She plays the violin. She does all sorts of work in the office. She does, she's here when people need to come in if, if nobody else can be. Oh my goodness. But she shared with me her babies. And so that's so nice to have. Of course, I've got Sweater Bear down here. And I've got Jim, our love bear, who also was a bear of Brian's brothers. And so there's so much love attached to, the, to him. I've got our fire truck, which I found here at the church, just as a reminder of the first responders. And, oh, right, I have to not forget our new friend here. Did you guys see? That's right, I've got Betty Boop. And for those of you that know Betty, our Betty here at the church, we, there are many that refer to her as, as Betty Boop, but so Betty Boop has, Betty has a Betty Boop nurse doll. And what a great thing. It says, be safe, be healthy, be happy. And I know that we are in the midst of so much right now, and we're trying our best to do just that, to stay healthy and to stay well. And uh, this is definitely a reminder of the nurses that work in the hospitals and the the care workers that work in the long-term care facilities and the retirement homes and of course the doctors and technicians that we are we are thinking of your the jobs that you're doing and thank you thank you betty for sharing our betty boop for our time together and of course i've got my buddy joe and lucinda these are actually puppets of my own that's right and uh, was that? yeah, I have a little something extra to show you, but I just wanted to share with you the, this, how special all my friends are. They help me to stay connected to our church. And yes, I did bring something that helps us, a reminder of being connected. I have a cup, yeah. The cup uh, is a 
reminder of being connected. And you may wonder what I mean. Well, it's connected to the drink I'm going to have. So I'm going to pour some water into my cup. And now I have this cup where I can drink from. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's not going to work. Did you all see that? My cup has a hole in it. That didn't work very well, did it? I picked out the wrong cup. Someone has put a hole in my cup. Of course, you need the bottom in your cup to be connected. And we all need something to be connected to as well. And sometimes when we're so busy running from here to there that we get worn out and tired and we need time to reconnect, to reconnect with our friends, to reconnect with our family, to reconnect with ourselves, Jesus would sometimes go off and pray by himself to give him a chance to connect once again with God, to reconnect with what his real purposes were so that he was just, wasn't just was running from here to there and everywhere. So my wish for all of you this week is to find a way to make sure that you are connected and to take the time that you need so that that may be possible. Have a great week. God bless. We come to church to be part of community. We come to share our gifts of our time, our, our talents, of the treasures of our heart, of the memories of people that have come before us. But we come to gather. And to gather in this place means that we have to give to help to keep the church striving and thriving into the future. And so we offer what we can. And now as our offering is received, I remind you of the different ways you can give. You can give by sending in an e-transfer and all the information is available on our website or through our newsletter of how to do that. You can go on par, which I know scares some people. They think, oh, I don't know about that, but it's really quite simple. It's called a pre-authorized remittance. And you decide how much you want to give and it automatically comes out of your bank account once a month. That's it. You decide how much. And for me, I like to go that route because I find I get so busy with Sundays that I don't always have cash on me or I don't even really own checks. So for me to have to know that my author offering has already gone, I don't have to worry about it, that works for me. But for some of you, you prefer to have your envelopes, and we still certainly have those. You wanna be able to provide your offering for the Mission and Service Fund, and of course, for the work of Heritage United Church. You can do that by sending in your envelopes and putting in cash or checks, whichever you're most comfortable with. And for those of you that are able to get out and are willing to, you could drop your offering off at Carol D's home. Just give her a quick call beforehand so that she can expect to find something in her mailbox. And those are the ways, one of the ways in which we give to our church. Our offering will now be received.
Receive and bless these gifts, O God, which we bring in response to the many gifts with which you have blessed us. As you graciously bestow these varying gifts upon us, so may we as graciously use them to serve others and to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And now let us take a few moments as we think of those most cherished to us, as we reflect on the world around us, our community, and those in need, as we bring our prayers to the people before God. Let us pray together. Eternal God, source of all mercies, we lift our hearts and voices to you this day in grateful praise. Hear our humble gratitude for the wonders of your creation, the beauty of this day and your great gift of abundant life. Daily we see the darkness of the year lifting and the time of light growing longer. The great gift of your Son has been the light of the world for Christians everywhere. Help us remember that we too can be a light in the world as we seek to act in ways that encourage the fulfillment of love and justice. Caring God, we ask you to watch over all people throughout the world. May your light so shine through us and may our actions bring comfort and hope to a world in such need. God, give those in leadership understanding that the better way is to serve with compassion and lead in justice, truth, and equality. We pray for the courage to be allies to fulfill the possibilities of each of your children, to protect all of your world and share the blessings of your care. God, we also know that you are a compassionate God. And so we pray for those who are sick and for those who look after them. We pray for those who are full of dread and anxiety and for those who carry the word of courage and faith. We pray for the weary and for those weighed down by chronic illness, pain, or frailty. We pray for those exhausted by the demands of work or for caring for others and for those who turn to you for new strength. Comforting God as we gather in this time together this morning, we are also aware of the joys and concerns of our own families those who continue to struggle with sickness and uncertainties. We place in your tender care those who are sick, ease their pain and present them the support they need through family, friends, and caregivers, and fill them with your love. We offer now the names of those on our minds this morning as we pray for Bob and Marilyn Palmer for Lee Kirby, Joyce Lapp, for Ellie Jones, John Seagriff, for Bob and Alma Watt, for Tina Connell and her family. Be with them, O oh God, as they face the challenges in their lives. And as we take up the challenge, O oh God, to go into the world with your message of light and love, guide us in your way. We pray in the name of Jesus, the light of the world, who taught us how to pray together, praying together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And at this time, let us hear some words from scriptures. A reading from Isaiah. Beth? Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 to 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? 
Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits on the, uh, above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads it out like a tent for, to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out the hosts and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the heavens, creator of the ends of the earth. He is not faint or he does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. sharing our first reading from scriptures this morning from Isaiah. And now let us hear our reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 to 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. 
He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So we traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. God bless these readings from our scriptures this morning. Amen. At this time, let us join our voices as we sing together the hymn, He Touched Me. Let us sing. continued to kneel, his eyes open, looking at the beauty of the ancient building. He just rested there in the silence. After a while, he noticed that there was other quiet, kneeling figures around him, and beside each hovered a beautiful white bird. Suddenly, one of the birds from, flew from where, they, where it was, as if confused. Once or twice, he thought it would fall to the ground, but gradually it gathered strength, rose toward the roof, and finally, with a purposeful sweep of its wings, sped out through one of the high open windows and into the sunshine. Then another bird rose from the floor and tried to reach the roof, but it too was in difficulty. It flew around in circles, occasionally beating its wings in futility against the closed windows, rich with stained glass. Finally, it sank down, exhausted, and lay still. Pondering on what he had seen, the man looked around again, but this time he saw, standing close to him, an angel, tall and strong with a face of great kindness wisdom and compassion. It seemed perfectly natural, as things do in dreams, and the man whispered to the angel, can you explain these white birds to me? Yes, said the angel in a low voice, 
as he seated himself beside the man. I am the guardian of this place of prayer. These white birds are the outward signs of the prayers of the people who come here. The first bird, which seemed to be confused, but then found its way, is the prayer of a woman who had come here straight from work. Her day had been busy. Her mind was full of distractions when she first knelt down to pray. But she persevered, for her heart is right with God. She wants to help others, so God helped her. Her prayer was genuine, so it finally reached God and her mind was calm. What about the bird that flew around in circles and eventually came back down to the man's side? Asked the man. The angel smiled slightly with a tinge of faint amusement. That, he said slowly, is the prayer of a man who thinks only of himself. He tries to use God for his own ends. People think he is very religious and his words are quite eloquent, but his prayers never reach God at all. When I read this story, I could envision those white birds making their way past an array of beautiful stained glass windows rising higher with their wings spread wide as they soar towards the sunshine and in that moment a prayer was raised up that idea of being raised up is undeniably biblical the idea of being raised up whether it's our prayers or our spirits reminds me of the promise from Isaiah that we heard. But they will wait upon the Lord, shall they renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Being raised up is so full of spiritual meaning. It speaks to the deep longing in people most people, I would say, who have a desire to be lifted out of their current circumstances to be more than they could ever imagine. It acknowledges life's hunger and restlessness for something more. And then there is the promise that we can be raised above the life we know. That we can be more than our own current circumstances would suggest. After a long day of preaching in the synagogue, healing a man who had been possessed by an unclean spirit and who knows what else, Jesus and his disciples then traveled to Simon and Andrew's house. Once they arrived, they learned that Simon's mother-in-law was ill with a fever. Now in the days before antibiotics and over-the-counter fever medications, a fever would not have been a minor inconvenience. It was often an indicator of a serious illness or infection. Having just seen what Jesus could do with the possessed man, Simon and Andrew tell Jesus of her illness. The description of her healing is so sparse that you could almost miss it. Yet Jesus goes to her, he takes her hand, and he lifts her up, and then the fever leaves her. It can be easy to overlook this miracle because of its seemingly simplicity. Once again, Mark offers little commentary, commentary on what is arguably an amazing story. That as soon as she is healed, we don't see her falling down in gratitude as others will do later in this gospel. No, after she is healed, her prayers answered, she appears to go ahead and make dinner which always makes me smile because in some ways, this seems all so familiar. I think many of us know a woman like this. Perhaps many of you are women like this. She is the ultimate host. You cannot walk into her house without being asked, have you eaten? And most likely before you've had a chance to answer, a plate will be put in front of you. Now this woman may be wealthy, but in all likelihood, she's not. She was just raised right. 
It doesn't matter how humble her surroundings. She will make sure that any guest who comes into her home has what they need and probably a little extra for the road. I have met women like this. Some of these memories come from visits with folks here at Heritage United Church. Another such a woman was from when I was quite young. She lived just up the street from my parents' home and she made the best German pastries. Visiting her home was always a treat because I was sure to come away with some flaky pastry filled with something wonderful. I have been greeted with great hospitality on so many occasions and asked some versions of the question, have you eaten? Quickly followed by, here, sit down, I'll fix you something. So when I read this story, I'm pretty sure that I can imagine Simon's mother-in-law's face. I've seen it a hundred times. For those of us who know this woman, we may not be surprised in the least the first thing she does when she's healed from a debilitating disease, possibly life-threatening illness, is to get up and make everybody lasagna or whatever. She probably even vacuumed too. Now for those of us who know these women, we know that they often take a great deal of pride in their role as host. The role of nurturer and comforter is of supreme importance to them. For some, it's a calling that they take very seriously. They could no more imagine just sitting down when company arrived than they could imagine growing wings and flying into the air. For others, the expectation of hospitality is so great in their community that the social consequences of being judged lazy inhospitable or a bad cook are just too much to bear. It is better to work oneself into the ground than to fail in this social obligation. In either case, and in any case in between, the hospitable woman often find themselves doing most of the cooking, far too little of the eating and nearly all of the cleaning. Of course, the work of being welcoming can take its toll especially if the host feels like she's doing so out of obligation rather than out of joy. So we certainly could get bogged down with what we have just heard. Maybe get distracted with the issue of gender roles and stereotypes and not pay attention to the healing miracle that occurred when Jesus lifted her up. Some may ask, is Simon's mother-in-law only healed so she can slave over a hot stove while the guys just sit around and share stories with Jesus? Couldn't some of the guys have said, whoa, hold on, mom, you've been sick. Why don't you sit down and tell us about it? How did it feel? You want to follow Jesus too? Don't worry about the food. Andrew can take care of the snacks. But knowing that even the authors of the Bible, inspired th th though they might be, were just as shaped by the social conventions of their time as we are by ours. I can't help but wonder about this short phrase. She began to serve them. It just seemed to call my attention to it. So I looked around and I came across one scholar's view of this text that put the idea of service in, in a light for me. He pointed out that the word to serve in Greek is diakoneo, and it usually means to serve food. Now I may not have got that pronunciation quite right, but that is the meaning. And yes, it is something that women are usually described as doing in the book of Mark like Martha who serves Jesus after her brother Lazarus is healed. But do you know who else who is described as serving using the same, that same verb? Jesus himself. It comes later in the book of Mark after two of his male followers, James and John, make requests to sit at places of honor by Jesus' side. Well, he rebukes them for their self-centeredness. He then tells of his Male disciples, the women are probably at this point in the kitchen cleaning up. I'm sorry, I just couldn't resist that. 
But Jesus tells the male disciples, whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. This is very interesting because it shows that even Jesus was willing to humble himself and be the one to serve others. To be the one to lift others up, even the least of those we would expect. And then comes the question. Who do we lift up when we serve in this way? Well, for starters, there are babies and pets, or how about those who are utterly dependent? Do we lift up those who are relying on us to do the things that they can no longer do for themselves? In those cases, we lift them up physically and emotionally. Many times, an emotional lift is more important than the physical assistance we can offer. Or to look at it another way, when do we need lifting up? Perhaps when we have nothing left to give. When we've gone so long handling everything ourselves that we just can't go and do it alone anymore. Perhaps when we have made the same life-denying choice for the hundredth time and we land on the heap and the floor again. Do we need lifting up then? Anyone who requires lifting up clearly does not have it in them to get up on their own. Simon's mother-in-law finds it herself in a desperate way, and Jesus takes the time to lift her up, to raise her up. How many people are there who feel like this woman with this fever? Unable to fulfill their life's calling, unable to contribute in a meaningful way to their family, in their community. Those who know the feeling of being deprived in some way. My goodness, I don't know about you, but I could write a whole sermon on that feeling of being deprived as we settle into these cold winter months and to continue to be bogged down with this constant news that we hear. Do we notice these people? Do we do our part by following Jesus' example and lend a hand? The fact that Peter's mother-in-law gets up and begins to serve certainly speaks to her gender role in her particular time, but it also speaks to her dignity. She was able to return to the work that was meaningful to her. She was once able, again able to contribute, and so she was restored. You know, it might also be helpful to understand the significance of illness in Rome. It bore a heavy social cost because not only would a person be unable to earn a living or contribute to the well-being of their household, but they would be un they would, their ability to be a valuable member of the household or village would be taken away from them. I think we can all relate to that given what we have all been going through right now. Peter's mother-in-law was a perfect example of this. It had been her calling to show guests hospitality when they came into her home. Her illness had cut her off from doing the things that she had been integrated in her, into her community. Who was she when she was no longer able to fulfill her role? By reaching out and freeing her of the fever, Jesus was able to restore her to her life of value. Being restored to what we are called to. Jesus lifted individuals up in an effort to restore them to what they were called to do and be. I believe that we are truly, what we are, we truly try to follow in the way of Jesus. We are also called to be a part of the raising up of others. Ah, oh, especially now. But we have to see them. We have to notice them. This past Tuesday, Steve and I decided to head out for a walk before the forecast snowfall showed up. Unfortunately, the weather people got it wrong and we ended up getting pelted in the face with snow and ice, but <laughs> I digress. Anyway, 
we decided to walk down to some forest trails, not too far from our home. It's an area that we both had been to many times before, but as Steve commented, he had never really seen it in quite this way before. That was because he had always run through this area, concentrating on his running mechanics and watching when it was a few feet in front of him, all the while trying to keep up his pace. He never really took the time to actually look around and notice what was there. But on this day, we did, and we saw what was spectacular. Old tree stumps laying alongside the path that had probably been there for years. The sound of the river. The tall, bare trees reaching high up into the sky. And the quietness of the moment, because there was no one around and no typical city sounds. It really reminded me of the first story I shared with you this morning about being lifted up. A perfect piece of God's creation at our fingertips. All we had to do was to notice it and appreciate it and be raised up by the beauty of it. To be raised up is so powerful it can take on many different forms as I've just said. The fact is at one time or another, in some way, we all need to be lifted up. But we are also called to be people who do the lifting as up as well. But we might fear that we simply can't lift up those with an illness, those who are trapped or we just don't know how. What did Jesus do? He simply started by taking her hand. Then he lifted her up. He reached out and he lifted her up. He risked having her lose her dignity. He let her fear, frustration, and loneliness touch him as he held out his hand. So much can be accomplished by simply, simply focusing on the person and offering a hand to hold. Barbara Brown Taylor, renowned preacher, said that we can't imagine the power that a touch of nearness has to make somewhat whole. Jesus understood that. His ministry was based on it. Love not expressed or felt is difficult to trust. Jesus is the incarnation of God's love, which makes it that much more demanding and even frightening to realize that for some people, we are the only Jesus they will ever meet. So we are called to rise to the occasion, to move forward, secure the knowledge that God will guide us each step we take. For as the beautiful hymn goes, I will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of my hand. May it be so. Let us pray. All loving God, we give you thanks that whatever terrain awaits us, you will meet us there. And that will be enough. In the name of Jesus, the one who came to dwell among us. Amen. And now let us join our voices as we joyously sing together our closing hymn, To God Be the Glory. Let us sing.
Let us go from this time together grateful that we made the effort to come. Grateful that God's love froze freely and abundantly in this time. Let us go now from this time together committed to naming the, and living out our particular gifts as God's beloved children, shared for the good of all. And may the blessings of God, our maker, whose life flows through us, the blessing of Jesus, who found joy in the everyday moments of life, and the blessing of the Spirit, whose companionship keeps us on this journey, surround, enfold, and guide us this day, this night, and always. Amen and amen.